All right, so what we're gonna do is a quick setup guide, you know, or a quick sort of quick start guide um, uh, for you. And this is the IDS see-through. It's primarily used for scanning concrete, for finding reinforcements or conduit or um, other embedded uh, objects. You could also potentially use it to find thickness of concrete uh, or even things that might be underneath the concrete. So uh, it's an all-in-one handle. Uh, you have encoders in the wheels and the screen is uh, right on the unit itself. The battery goes into the back here. Okay, so just take it out. You can test the battery if you need to. Okay, so we have you know full charge. So just put it back in, close it, push it in and twist it, and it's ready to go. Power button's right on the uh, interior right here. Press it, it's gonna light up blue. And then at some point, if you ever wanted to take your data off the system, you can just plug a USB drive right in here, and then you can just save your data to the USB drive and put it on a computer. Okay. So it'll take a second, and then it's gonna come up with its see-through, and then it's gonna come up with the home screen, and the home screen is gonna have four uh, options for you when it gets started. So here are the four options, all right? And basically, you have settings, you have uh, previous data, you have line scan, and then grid scan. Okay, so settings, open project, line scan, and grid scan. So if you just wanna get started real easy, real quick, the fastest way to get started is you just press line scan, you just press the icon. It's gonna bring up the data collection screen and then you can literally just press play and it'll start collecting when you move it. So if I go to the wall, for example, okay, I can just press play and now as I start to pull it down, you can see it starts to collect, collect data, okay? The system itself is a dual polarized uh, system. So you have a regular polarization and a cross polarization. Um, and that just helps to uh, see between like dense wire mesh. And so if you're dealing with that, then the cross polarized antenna uh, will be uh, particularly helpful. You can look at both. You can look at, at only one antenna if you want. And obviously that red marker is gonna tell us you know, where we are. So if you see here, you can, I can just zoom in a little bit. Okay. I'm now bisecting a hyperbola, and that's because I'm on top of a rebar. This system itself does not use the side to mark where rebar are. It uses the front of the actual uh, system. So right now, as I'm you know, pulling back, and now I'm bisecting the hyperbola, that's where my rebar is in front of the actual tool. And so you can see we've marked out some rebar and, uh, and, and that's one of them right there, right? If I kind of push it back up, you can see I'm bisecting another hyperbola and I'm on another marking. If I come back down, right, I'm bisecting another hyperbola and here's another one. If we continue to collect additional data, right, here's the next one, I would mark it right here. So that's as simple as it is. Um, you can rotate these if you prefer. So you can just rotate this around, right? So now I'm looking at it just, you know, this, this way. I personally like it that way, but it's up to you what you want to do. You can turn off one of the antenna if you want. Um, you know, it's, it's still limited real estate, although it's a big screen. And so maybe I just want to look at one or the other. I can change the color by pressing the little color palette. And so it gives you a few options, just cycles through them. It's totally your choice. And then uh, you can also pin, if you want, uh, a response and basically tag it uh, as something. So I can press pin, I can hold it down, and then I can go ahead and actually and pin it. And I'll say that's a rebar. And now if I light it up again, it'll show me where, the, where it was. Uh, finally, let's say I want to export this image to a customer. I can go ahead and these little three bars down here give me some additional options. I can just press the camera and that'll screenshot what's on my screen. And now I can just OK it. And now that screenshot is in the folder on that home page. All right. 
Actually, one other thing you can do, this was a nice upgrade that they made a little while ago, is you can, um, you can do an assessment of the velocity. So I can also press these three bars. I can press the little hyperbola, and then I can actually uh, adjust this to where it is. It's actually covering it up a little bit uh, right now. Uh, let's see here. And I should be able to make this adjustment here, and it'll change what the depth is uh, on the side. Uh, finally, I can go ahead and uh, hold down, and if I uh, press these three bars, I can turn on and off different filters. So, for example, if I want to turn off um, uh, uh, zero time correction, I okay it, now it's going to drop everything down because it's not corrected for zero. Right, if I want to turn it back on, back in, and I can okay it. All right, so that's really basic. You can, again, turn these on and off at, at your will. If I want to turn the migration and the Hibbert transform on, right, to sort of see just those responses in here, I can do that. So now instead of hyperbola, I have these little responses uh, in, in here. If I want to go back to normal view, now it's back to where I am. All right, so that's, that's it. That's the basic use of it to exit out. You know, I can stop by pausing that here, and then I can just exit uh, uh, using this little, you know, leaving uh, uh, open door. Uh, do you want to end the survey? Yes, and now I'm back to the home screen. All right, so I can pull that up uh, here if I want to. It'll show me, you know, what my survey is. 22, two, 2022, June 17th um, is, is uh, today. Uh, and that's, you know, so we can just go ahead and, and uh, we have that survey in there. Um, if I want to adjust my settings, I can. My scan step, it gives me a few options. You have uh, eight scans per inch, 10 scans, 13 or 20. It's really up to you. 20 is obviously going to be the, the, the densest amount of data. It's going to put out 20 scans per inch, um, whereas eight is going to be the, the, the least resolution, right? The worst resolution. Stick it at 20. Aspect ratio, it's your call. Um, I usually go with like a two to one or three to one, but you can change it all the way up to five to one or down to one to one. All right, your choice. Depth range, you can go up to 20 nanoseconds, which is pretty deep. And the minimum that it allows you to go is, uh, is eight. So if you're you know, investigating like a four inch slab, then you might want to go to eight nanoseconds, right? That's gonna capture all that without giving you all sorts of additional at, at, at the end. Uh, you even saw in our scan, right, this is only a six inch slab over here. At 20 nanoseconds, it was way too much, right? But if I'm trying to find a conduit underneath a, uh, a slab that might be two feet down, then I wanna maybe go, you know, 20 nanoseconds or something like that. Or if I'm investigating a 12 inch or 18 inch or two foot slab, you know, a foundation or something like that, I'm gonna go to 20 nanoseconds. Um, so just gonna depend on what you're, on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, propagation velocity, again, that will change as you do the hyperbola match. You want to make sure that your frequency is correct. This has a passive EM sensor in it. In the U.S., it's 60 hertz. Everywhere else in the world, basically, it's going to be 50 hertz. So just choose the right one. Um, and then you can always calibrate your encoder wheel. So you can actually push the system um, the correct amount of inches or centimeters, depending on uh, uh, what units you use, and actually calibrate the survey wheel. Um, so that's, that's the basic settings. You can, again, choose metric or imperial in here, what your language is, and so on. Uh, and that's, that's basically it. Up here, you have a couple other options. You've, if you do a grid, it has reflectors to it. I'm going to bring those out. Right. And so basically, you can set these reflectors up on the floor. And if you have this selected, then you can move it around within the reflectors and it knows where it is. Um, so it's like an augmented reality. Uh, but a really critical tool is this little uh, um, plug with a lightning bolt in it. Because if I click that, now when I do my line scan, I'll get another piece of information. I'll get actually a little yellow line that will, or should spike if it goes over a live wire. 